Shading or highlighting periods in Excel charts can help users more quickly interpret them and identify patterns. In this chart, I've highlighted every second month to give a quick visual indication of each period. And this allows the user to focus on the line instead of having to refer back and forth to the horizontal axis. Or you can use this technique to focus their attention on a specific period, like the winter months in this chart. And we can use this same technique to highlight a single date or even several points. And the good news is it's super easy. Let's take a look. Here I have my chart source data. Starting in column B are the dates. Now, this column isn't actually plotted in the chart. Instead, I have two helper columns, C and D, for the month and day, and they'll form a nested axis. The formula in column C uses if to identify the first date in each month. And the formula in column D uses if with mod to list every seventh date. This avoids the axis getting cluttered and makes it easier to read a whole year's worth of data. Now the secret to these techniques is to plot another series on the secondary axis for highlighting or shading. And that's what I have here in column F. In my example, the even months are shaded and you can see the formula returns true if the month number is even. And when you plot true in a chart, it's the equivalent of one and you'll see that in a moment. I'll start by selecting the chart data. Remember, I don't want column B that contains the dates. And we're just going to insert a line chart. I'll bring it up here and make it a bit bigger. Now I need to change the chart type for the shade month series to a clustered column. So I'm going to right click, change chart type. Down here I want combo. The temperature values I want as a line. And the shade month I want as the clustered column. And we're going to pop that on the secondary axis. You can see in the preview, it's already taking shape. Next, we need to format these columns. So I'm going to select one of them, control one, and that opens the format data series. Here I want the gap width to be zero. And we're just going to tone down the color to make it something more subtle. Let's go with a pale shade of gray. Next, I want to modify the secondary axis so that the maximum is one. That will just take the column to the top of the chart. Now I've done that, I want to hide the secondary axis. So we're going to go into tick marks and set the major type to none. And with labels, we also want none. Lastly, I can put some finishing touches on like perhaps getting rid of the grid lines. Let's move the legend up to the top and we'll get rid of the shade month legend. We don't need that, self-explanatory. Let's give it a chart title. And we're good to go. So there you have a shaded months, which may help your reader interpret the chart more quickly. Now a variation on this technique is to shade periods. So let's take a look. Here I've simply changed the formula for the shaded area to check if the dates fall within our winter period of June to August. And instead of gray shading, I've used blue to represent winter. Otherwise, everything else is the same in terms of the way the chart is built. And you can obviously modify this technique to suit your business needs. You might want to highlight quarters, or there might be a specific period in your sales calendar that you want to focus on. An alternative to shading areas is to highlight just one date, either with a vertical line or a marker. Here in column F, the formula checks if the temperature is equal to the maximum for the year. If it is, the temperature is returned, as we can see down here in February. If not, we get the NA error. Now I'm using NA here to hide the line in the chart, which is required for the second example I'm going to show you in a moment. So I'm just going to select the data and scroll to the top, insert a line chart. Let's bring it up here and we'll make it a bit bigger. I need to change the chart type down here in combo. The temperature needs to be a line chart and the maximum temperature is going to be the cluster column. Here I'm going to leave them both on the primary axis. So I'll click OK, and you can see the line now for the maximum temperature in the chart. Now an alternative is to use a dot marker instead of the line. So I'm just going to Control D to duplicate that chart, and we'll modify it. So here I want to right click and change the chart type. For the maximum temperature, I want the line chart with markers. Again, they both stay on the primary axis. I'll click OK, 
You can see now the maximum temperature is highlighted with the dot. Now with this example, it's important that the values you don't want plotted in the line are returning the NA error. That will prevent the line dipping down to the zero and drawing a straight line along the bottom of the chart. Now I just want to select that dot and format it because if we look at the legend, you can see it's showing a line with the dot marker and I want to just remove that line. So I'm going to select the series maximum temperature in here and the formatting which is already open, but if it's not for you, you can control one to open it. I want to say no line. You can see now the legend correctly matches the dot marker in the chart. And with that series selected, I can also add things like a data label just to that series. And that's going to highlight the maximum for the year. Let's get rid of the grid lines and our chart is done. We can obviously add the title and move the legend to the top if that's where you prefer to have it. That's typically where I like to put my legend. It just takes up a bit less space in my chart. Well, I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.